This is in response to Yeah Buddy's questions relating to visiting in-laws. First thing I want to say is visiting my in-laws in the Philippines is a little bit different. Um, we've got the camp, compound next door where we've got apartments in the same compound. Um, it's a mishmash of stuff we do together. So the point being is I don't really have these issues because uh, we have our own space. Um, we've got air conditioning in my office, air conditioning in my other office, air conditioning in our apartment, air conditioning pretty much everywhere. So air conditioning is no issue. Roosters, you can't get away from it. Um, the only places that really don't have them are subdivisions where they've made it rules that roosters aren't allowed in them. Um, beyond that, the the best solution I recommend is the same solution I had when I first went to the Philippines. My wife um, and her family lived sort of here, and I booked into the nearest hotel. Um, I picked a hotel which had the swimming pools, etc., etc. So if my wife was at work, I still had stuff to do. Also, my sister-in-law was available to take me wherever I wanted. So the answer to that is book yourself into a hotel, but also talk to your wife so you don't want to spend all your time with the in-laws. You know, it's it's all right, it's like going for dinner and things like that, but you don't want to be there all day. I mean, my brother-in-law, when he goes back to the Philippines, he spends most of his time with his friends and stuff he hasn't seen. Um, he, he does stop it, obviously, his parents, but at the same time, his day-to-day -day regimes involves going out with his friends that he spent his time in childhood with um, so the best response to that is book yourself into a hotel look what transport's available ask your wife what you can do you know can somebody drive you around while she goes and spends time with her, her family and stuff because if you don't push it forward your partner's not going to be aware of it because she wouldn't even think about you getting bored um, because her whole focus is have I got everything have I got a gift for every every person have I got all the stuff I need to take to the Philippines it, who's going to meet me at the airport blah 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 you're not, you're not on the list of things that need to be sorted out it's just assumed you'll just tag along and do whatever. So the answer to that is quite simply uh, be a little bit selfish. Just turn around and say, look, I don't want to be there all day. Um, or we're there for two weeks. I'm, I'm taking two weeks off holiday as well. So I'd actually like to spend some time doing stuff and not just sitting around the house. So I want stuff to do. And with that, you, your wife will probably contact one of her relatives that's got a car, motorbike or whatever, and say, well, John will take you out, John will take you to the malls, to the beaches, whatever you want to do. Um, on the other side of that is you could actually sort it out for family events, but they do get quite expensive. Um, we have beach outings, for example, but feeding about 12 people can run up a bill, um, but it's quite common to do it. But I'll be honest with you, it's quite lucky when we normally have these types of events. We, we have several OFWs in the family. So it's not foreigner pays all, but often we split the bill because everybody's going and several people are coming home, which is why the event was taking place in the first place. So hope that helps. Yeah.